Hey guys, hope you're all good today. Previously we saw the basic concept of joins in which we discussed quite a few types of joins. Today we'll be discussing another type of join, the right outer join, and we'll take a look at an example of how to implement it in Informatica. So the right outer join is another type of join and is called a right outer join. This type of join returns all rows from the right hand table specified in the on condition and only those rows from the other table where the join fields are equal. This is where the join condition is met. The syntax for SQL right outer join is select columns from table 1 right outer join table 2. On table 1 column <coughs> equal to table 2 column. In some databases, the right outer join keywords are replaced with right, out, right join. Visual illustration shows that the SQL right outer join would return the, all the records of table 2 and only those records from table 1 which intersect with table 2. So let's move on to an example of it. And let's first create, let's first see the data in the departments and employees table of the source which we'll be using in our example. So let's connect to the ODBC connection, the test one ODBC connection that we created earlier. <clears throat> okay, here we'll use the username HR and password HR as well. Now let's select steric from the employees table and also select steric from departments. So if we execute the first statement, we'll see that we have 107 rows returned with department IDs such as, sorry, department IDs such as null 10 20 30 up to 100 and yeah there you go up to 110 and if we execute the department's query then we'll see that <coughs> departments yeah then we'll see that there are many more department ids than which were in the employees table such as 270, 200, 220 etc. So what will happen if we apply a right outer join to both of these tables? So let's take a look what happens. Select steric from department D left outer join Oh, I'm sorry, it should be right outer join as we're using the right outer join option here. So let's do this as right outer join. Employees E on E dot department ID equal to D dot department ID. Let's change this to E and change that to D. Yeah. So let's execute this and see what happens. There you go, 107 rows were returned and all the rows from the employees table are returned. But for the null department ID, we can see that the department name is also null, which was not present in the department's table. So how can we implement this in Informatica Power Center? Let's take a look at that. So <clears throat> firstly, we'll create a target table for the Informatica mapping in the target database. So let's open another instance of the SQL assistant, connect to the ODBC test one connection. Using the username target and password target as well. Here, let's get the definition of the employees table. Add another table, another uh, column by the name of department underscore name. Worker to 
50 and let's change the name of the table to employees underscore join yeah execute this statement and the new table has been created now let's go to the power center designer to create the mapping <clears throat> Okay, connect to the repository in fund underscore training, username, administrator, password, oracle. Oops. Yeah. Open the folder training. And here, let's create new mapping. Mapping create. And name it as m underscore <coughs> employees underscore employees underscore join click OK now <coughs> let's see the sources that we need the departments and employees table we already have them here so let's bring them over here we need to bring in the new target table that we've created so let's import it in the target database target designer import from database password target and username target as well <coughs> okay select the new table that we created employees underscore join there you have it drag it to the mapping and now we need to bring in a join a joiner transformation So bring it over here. Now, <clears throat> let's bring all the columns from the employees table to the joiner and the department ID and department name from the department table as these are the only two columns that we'll be needing. So let's edit the properties of the joiner now. Let's rename it to JNR underscore employee. Let's go to the condition and add a new condition where we'll be joining the master column of department ID and the detail column of department ID as well. Now what are master and uh, detail columns, tables? So master table is this table, uh, department's table by default. And if we click on any other uh, column of the table, employees table, that will become the master table. Master table is the one which has lesser number of rows. So let's keep the department table as that. Now let's select in the property tab join type as the master. <clears throat> this is the master. So let's choose the master uh, join. Click apply. Okay. And let's auto link <clears throat> the columns of the joiner to the target. Click okay. And there you have it arrange all of this so yeah now what we're doing in this mapping is that we're joining both the employees and departments table and right joining them and taking them to the target employee join table so let's save the work and we can see over here that it has been validated now let's move over to the workflow manager and create the session and workflow for it. <clears throat> okay, let's create a new workflow. Name it as WF underscore employees underscore employees underscore join. Now let's create a new session for the mapping that we just created select the mapping join mapping click ok link the start of the workflow to the session and arrange this horizontally let's edit the properties of the session firstly let's, re let's rename it and remove the m underscore 
for naming convention purposes and select the fail parent if task fails property then in the properties tab let's select the right backward compatibility session log if you scroll down we need to set the session and target variable for the data connections so as the source connection select HR and for the target connection select the target database and in the config objects tab set 5 as the number of session log files that we need to save and stop on errors as 1 let's go to the mappings tab <coughs> and over here we need to set the data connection for the source as this connection variable dollar source nothing else to set for this source for the second source set the data connection again as the dollar source connection okay yeah nothing else now for the target set the data connection as dollar target in the connection variable <coughs> select the normal load type and also the truncate table option okay click apply click ok and let's now save the work let's validate it first and let's save the work okay now we need to run the workflow and see how it works out how the right join works out okay yeah it succeeded and 107 rows were loaded to the target now let's take a look at this session log for this and if we scroll down we can see that how many rows were taken from each of the sources and how many were put into the target so 27 rows from one table, 107 rows from another, another table, and 107 rows were loaded to the target database. So let's take a look at the target table and the data loaded in it. So select steric from employees underscore join. Okay. Now let's sort this on department ID. <clears throat> and yeah, there you go. You can see this is the same data that we saw in when we ran the query uh, before where we had all the rows from the employees table and the row for the null department id where we had no other data for in the department table has nulls in it so this was would be it from now and we'll be looking at another example in the, in the coming video so stay with us thank you so much bye bye